The Phytotron has several different types of growth conditions, chambers. We call them A, B, and C chambers, and then there's a glass house at the top. We do interactive effects work on ozone, CO2, light, temperature, moisture, nutrients. We could do all of it in the Phytotron. So if you take the word Phytotron apart, uh, Phyto means plant and Tron means instrument. It's more of a collection of growth chambers and different environments and, and specialized greenhouses where you can grow plants. The great challenge all Phytotrons face is can we get the quality of light to approximate the quality of natural light. What we've tried to do is minimize cost by uh, doing upgrades and having things as efficient as they possibly can be. And I want to mention a person who is so fully involved in this is Dr. Paul Kramer. And he had a vision. Dr. Kramer wanted to bring into existence a controlled environment facility to grow crops and make measurements, both yield and quality, both to be able to ask why are the crops responding as they are. The Phytotron is as vibrant and important to uh, plant biology today as it was in 1968 when the building first opened. But we are convinced that our Phytotron gives us opportunity to do research that cannot be duplicated anywhere else in the world. We're happy to have students come through so they can understand more about, about plant biology. It's a wonderful team of scientists, staff persons, personnel who are passionate about making sure that this Phytotron does what it's supposed to do. Our, our students, we have both graduate students and undergraduates conducting research in the Phytotron. We felt and still do today that the work we do in the Phytotron provides us insights that are applicable to the real world.